Welcome to this tutorial on creating a GitHub Actions workflow using the Workflow Dispatch Trigger. GitHub Actions are a powerful tool that allows you to automate tasks and build, test, and deploy your code directly from your GitHub repository. Today, we'll be focusing on the Workflow Dispatch Trigger, which allows you to manually trigger a workflow run with customizable input parameters. This is useful when you want to run a workflow on demand outside of its usual schedule or triggers. By the end of this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a GitHub Actions workflow, add the workflow dispatch trigger to it, and manually trigger the workflow from GitHub. So if you're interested in learning more about GitHub Actions and the workflow dispatch trigger, let's get started. You can find the code for this tutorial on GitHub at gubar-dev slash GitHub Actions tutorial. For this tutorial, I'll be working out of IntelliJ, but you can follow along with any IDE or text editor you want, just as long as you can push your changes back to your GitHub repo when you're done. To get started, I'm going to create a new Git branch here in my repo. Next, I'll create a new GitHub Actions workflow file. And I want to put that file at dot github slash workflows. And I'm going to call it basic workflow dispatch example dot YML. In this case, if you're unfamiliar, the YML a suffix at the end stands for YAML, uh, which is the file format that we're going to be using to define our workflow here. Now that we have our basic workflow, we're going to stub this out. So our workflow needs a basic name. So we'll add the name config here and we will call this basic workflow dispatch example. And next up, we're gonna define a jobs section and we're gonna define a basic job here named deploy. And in our case, this is going to run on the Ubuntu latest runner. And it's going to have a single step, which will simply run echo, we did the thing. So this will be our basic workflow here. Now, the big question is how do we allow this workflow to be manually triggered anytime we want to run it. Now at the moment, this workflow has no trigger whatsoever. To add our manual trigger, we're going to come up towards the top of our workflow and we're going to add the on config. And in this case, we're going to type workflow dispatch. Now we could go on to customize things with this workflow dispatch trigger, such as inputs. But for this video, we're gonna keep it simple. We're not going to use any inputs. So with this in place, now we're ready to actually test our workflow. So I'll go ahead and commit my code here. And then I'll push it up to my repo. Once I've pushed the code to my repo, I wanna to navigate to the actions tab in the repository. However, when we get here, we don't see any actions available for us to actually run. Why is that? Well, this is a good thing to call out. To run a workflow via Workflow Dispatch, the workflow needs to exist in your default branch. Once it's in the default branch, you can run that workflow against any arbitrary branch. This means you could have a simple version of the workflow in your default branch to get you started, say at the beginning of development, and then build out and test more complex behaviors in another branch. To enable me to actually run this workflow, I'm going to create a PR for my branch real quick. And then I will go ahead and merge that PR into my main branch. And now if I come back to my actions tab, now we see that my basic workflow dispatch example workflow exists over here on the left-hand side of the screen. So to run this workflow, I can then select the workflow, 
And we'll see here that there have been zero workflow runs up to this point. However, we'll also see that over on the right hand side of the screen, we have this run workflow dropdown. If I select that, it will allow me to select what branch I want to run this from. In my case, I only have a single branch. Notice, however, that you could also run this against a tag if you wanted as well. So in my case, I'll leave it selected as main and I'll click run workflow. And after a few moments, we should see a workflow appear and our workflow is going to run and carry out whatever actions it has been designed to do. In my case here, it's a very simple workflow. So it took only a couple of seconds to finish. And we see that our step here echoed out to the console. We did the thing. And yes, we did. This is all we needed to do to set up a manual trigger for our GitHub actions workflows. Now this workflow was definitely very simple. However, we could add this trigger to any existing workflow that you might already have to allow it to be started manually. This could be extremely useful if you have complex workflows that might require things like cutting a release to trigger them. Cutting a release is a pretty heavy operation to do, and it makes testing difficult during development time. Adding a workflow dispatch to that workflow could allow you to trigger the workflow without cutting a release, thereby speeding up future development. An additional benefit of workflow dispatch triggers is that they allow us to define inputs that can then be used within our workflows. This can provide a great deal of flexibility and reusability in our workflows, and we'll explore how to work with these inputs in a future video. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the GitHub Actions playlist. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Until next time, devs.